I found the counseling center and so I had called to make an appointment. I told Mason about it and I remember her starting by asking, so how'd you guys meet? And I started to talk of what I, you know, have shared about how, where we met and how we were in school and I started to cry in that moment because seeing where our relationship had, had come or what it had come to in those six years since we'd been married was honestly really heartbreaking to be able to, to look back at that time and remember such joy in that moment and now be at a place where we weren't, we were sitting on the opposite sides of a couch and um, our body language was not that of loving to each other at all. When I first saw her, um, there was instant attraction. I, obviously she's very beautiful and that was kind of one of the first things, but there's something about her light and her spirit that I could tell. Uh, she's a very positive person, energetic and uh, just really attracted to that. When we first met, I thought, oh great, we were raised the same way. Life is gonna be easy because we have the same values and um, and that's not the case. Life isn't just easy because we're raised the same way. We're still two different people and we still have our own struggles. And uh, eventually I did confess to her that I you know, kind of struggled a little bit with pornography. Uh, I definitely downplayed it a lot. Uh, made it kind of seem like it was more of a past struggle that I had kind of gotten a hold of. And I also felt, well, once we get married, that intimacy will be taken care of. So you'll be fine. You won't struggle with that anymore. Uh, that was very wrong. Uh, it's not really the same. It doesn't fix the issue. I didn't recognize or understand Grace at all, uh, feeling like it was something that I needed to do, that I needed to fix it. And uh, then I could come to God and say, look, I've brought this clean person for you to use. So when it came to 2015, we had now two children. So we had two kids at the time when my wife caught me for the final straw and uh, told me it was get help or this is over. The big crux in that moment was childcare issues for me. Because to me, I can be okay with suffering with, with his addiction, but I didn't want our children to suffer because of, of things too. So my big reason at that moment was the childcare, which I thought maybe his addiction was playing into that. Maybe that's why he wasn't sleeping. I didn't really know because I would fall asleep before he got home from work. So we got in a big argument again, and that was the first time that um, the word divorce was thrown out. So I chose to take the kids to my parents' house, um, and he was not happy about that because I didn't ask him, <laughs> I just took them. I really didn't know how to handle that. Uh, and I initially responded with anger. He got mad, he ripped a hook off a wall and threw it. Um, and he ended up leaving at that moment, so I was home by myself with the kids. But really the, the fear, I guess, of losing everything got to me, and that's where it kind of got me to the point of saying, okay, I guess I'll go and see what I can do to get some help. I remember um, looking through my Bible, trying to see where I could find a verse that would let me out of my relationship, essentially. And so I remember sitting in the back of the service being very <laughs> convicted in that moment that, okay, Lord, I'm living for myself right now. I am not living for you. So I need to I need to, to try to make this marriage work, even though I do not want to make this marriage work right now. There's nothing in me, in my, me and my selfish ways that wants this to work because I'm tired. I'm really tired of trying. And um, it would just be easier for me to get out. But if this is what you want, then I'll keep trying. And I remember having that thought in that moment. When I first started going to uh, regeneration, it was mainly out of an obligation. I just wanted to check the box so I wouldn't have to get a divorce, basically. I kind of started realizing that there was actually something that I needed to change inside myself, or rather God needed to change it for me, because that's really what happened. But they have uh, the third step, and that would be trust. Uh, it was the third step of those 12. And something changed in my heart when I started going through that step. And I finally was able to realize that he loved me right where I was at. And that completely changed my outlook on life uh, and my life overall, just as a whole. Well, I started going to Region thinking like, I don't really have much to work on, but I'll come and maybe it'll help me at least understand what he's going through more. I actually had the audacity to say to her, I think you might benefit from going to this program as well. And uh, by the grace of God, she took it well, and she was actually willing to try and to come to Regen as well. By the second week, I realized that I do have some areas in my life that, that I'm struggling with. And although I didn't really know what I was struggling with, I knew I was broken. So at that moment, I knew that I needed to commit to doing this program for me and not for him. So the entire time through the 12-step program, I was dreading making amends with my wife because I knew I was gonna have to share some stuff that she did not know and because I'd done my best to keep secrets from her through our entire marriage. I uh, felt convicted that God wanted me to come clean, to be an honest person who lives in the light. I didn't want my marriage to end, obviously. I felt like God had started working in our lives 
but I knew I had to fess up to what I had done and accept, you know, the punishment for my sins. I thought I, I knew a lot of what I was going to hear. I thought there might be some things I didn't know, but for the most part, I knew he had an addiction to pornography. I knew it you know, had led him to do a few things that he probably shouldn't have done, but nothing major. And so um, when he read in there that he'd actually cheated on me um, three months or so after we were married. So I told her, hey, I um, early on in our marriage went and I visited a prostitute and I'm incredibly sorry. And there's nothing I could ever do to repay the damage of that to you and just watched as she just started crying. I knew it was gonna be painful, um, but I really wasn't ready for my own pain in that moment of watching my actions and what it was doing to her. And that was really hard. And I remember sitting there a year prior when we were battling the idea of divorce and thinking, Lord, give me something to get me out. And if I would have known about that a year ahead of time, that would have been my out. Like, you cheated on me. It clearly says you're not supposed to do that. I'm done. And now knowing this a year later, I thought, well, what do I do now? Because I don't want out anymore. I wanted to forgive him. Which uh, was mind blowing to me. For the first time in the 12 step program, the actual grace of God being shown to me in my life that he loved me where I was at. And then being shown that again by my wife loving me in spite of all my sin. Um, it just really hit me in the heart. We can share about our spiritual journey together, which we'd never done before. We can talk about our fears. We can be more intimate with each other. Uh, all these things that I just wasn't able to do in our marriage because I was shut off. I wasn't able to be intimate because I was hiding all these secrets on the shame. It's been oh, so much better <laughs> since then. So. I want people to have hope and know that, that God's not done with them. and. Um, that there, there is value out there and there is uh, worth for them. I can sit here because of what Christ did uh, in dying on the cross and he died for my sins so that I could be made right with him. And without that, I don't have a story. So, <laughs> I mean, that's the good news to me.